Hello, welcome to the garage. I am Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We come here twice a week and we talk about golf cart related issues. We're going to go over some questions. I'm having a little difficulty today with uh, the YouTube format, so I think we're just going to be live on Facebook. For some reason, it looks like YouTube disconnected on me. I uh, don't know if it's going to reconnect on its own or what, but as far as I can tell, we're just going to be live on Facebook today. Sorry about that. Just some technical issues that come up sometimes. I don't know why it happened. Anyway, uh, we might interact with some live people in the chat. If it most likely would be on Facebook since my YouTube doesn't seem to be working. Let me check to make sure. Uh, it looks like the way it's going to be today. Anyway, so let's get started. It's uh, going to be episode 72 today. Uh, the garage is now open, so let's get started with the regular questions. Oh, feel free to stay tuned to the end of the video because we will be giving away something today also. Question number one. G14 Yamaha electric golf cart, new Trojan 36 volt batteries, rebuilt controller, new solenoid, new pedal controller switch at pedal. Anyway, the to control the fast takeoff, snatch, and grab when electric kicks in. So if what you're saying is that it uh, seems to be unusually uh, fast in the beginning, that sounds like, like in Yamaha, it's called a throttle position sensor. So I don't know if what you replaced was that, or did you just replace the pedal stop switch? Or that the throttle position sensor is definitely what would control that lurching takeoff. So uh, that, that would be what I would be looking at on that because it sounds exactly like what you're doing. Other than that, everything should be smooth. Let's see, number two. I removed the six six volt batteries from our golf cart for the season and brought them home from our camp. The cart is a 2009 EasyGo 36 volt with PDS. I have an extra 36 volt charger at home that I don't use. Can I buy the female end of that charger connector and just wire it to the batteries all connected as they would be in the cart? Sure you can. That's a, that's a great idea if you have that, that extra part. And what you're talking about is the uh, is the charging receptacle. If you, you have an extra, if you had just an extra charging receptacle, you could bring those batteries home, wire them up in series just like they are in the cart, hook the charging receptacle to it, plug your charger in, you could maintain them that way. That's an excellent idea. Not everybody has, you know, wants to go through that much trouble, but yeah, that would work. There's no doubt about it. Number three. I put 12 inch tires on my 2019 club car precedent. I think you might mean 12 inch rims, not 12 inch tires. You put 12 inch rims on, for, you know, first of all. The right tire is rubbing the inside fender when I turn on uneven ground. If I put a one inch spacer on the back wheels only, will that stop the rub? I'd, Putting, putting a one inch spacer on the back wheels is not going to stop a rub in the front. Uh, your back wheels are just stationary. They, 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 all they do is turn. So if you've got enough space up and down in the back, then you'll be fine. But if you're, if you're rubbing when you turn on the front somewhere, that's not going to change anything. You might have to put a spacer, you can put a spacer on your front wheels. It, you know, maybe that will help you out. Let me see. Yeah. Okay, that was number three. Let me go to number four. I have a Yamaha Electric G19. Yesterday it went from 22 miles an hour to 26. As you let off the uh, accelerator pedal, it jerks slightly and a faint beeping sound occurs. When you let off the accelerator pedal, it slows down dramatically in a slightly jerky motion. Mm, I'll tell you what, that seems, 
It went from 22 to 26. That seems really fast for a for a stock G14. So you you could have a you could have a speed sensor issue uh, that could have, that the the drastically slowing down part is probably your regenerative braking that that's that's kicking in. But uh, that seems really fast. What controller would, are you using to get that kind of speed too? I would want to know that. Is that the stock controller? And is everything on the car stock? Because that seems the numbers seem pretty high. 26, that shouldn't even be obtainable on that car without changing some, some parts. So I'd really have to know exactly which individual parts have been changed and what you're running to, to probably help you there. Let's see here. Looks like we're all right there. That was number number four, so we're gonna go to five. I have a 2017 Drive Two. The lug nuts appear to be cross-threaded. They just spin, neither tighten nor loosen. Can you suggest a way to remove the lug nuts? Well, I remember speaking with this. Uh, gentleman earlier in the, this week and we went over the fact he, he figured out what was wrong uh, before I told him I mean Yamaha is the only one that has metric lug nuts you know like easy go and club car they, they just use universal lug nuts you can you can put them on either one but Yamaha has metric threads on the lug nuts uh, studs so you have to have metric lug nuts for Yamaha it's the only one that has metric lug nuts out of the three major manufacturers, Easy Go, Yamaha, and Club Car. So what happened was he had put regular lug nuts on there and they don't quite line up to the metric threads and then they, they strip, they're gonna strip something. So he had either stripped his studs threads or he had stripped the lug nut threads, one or the other, and he wasn't at his golf cart so he couldn't go check. So we talked about the different methods of trying to get them off. And we need to find you need to find out if the stud is spinning, which is most likely is not. It's most likely that the the lug nuts are stripped themselves. But you might have to get vice grips and put reverse pressure on them, and then try to turn just to see if you can get them out of there. You might have to get something more that can pull on that lug nut as it turns. Maybe even a big pair of vice grips. I mean, there's there's a, not any clear way to do it. You just have to to use your head and come up with something to to get those off to, or to pull them back far enough to actually catch a thread or two that's not stripped and to back the lug nut off or he's going to end up having to get a whole new wheel hub. You can take the dust cover off, take that wheel hub off and then put a whole new wheel hub on there and then you'd be good to go. Number six. EasyGo 2000 TXT series 36 volt speed controller. Does the forward and reverse switch need to be heavy duty? Doing a complete R and R on the electrical system, cart will be used occasionally. Moving three passengers to and from a helicopter 50 feet away on hard asphalt surface, not going up and down grassy hills uh, constantly. If the F and R switch is heavy duty, do the solenoid and speed controller need to be heavy duty as well? What is suggested amp listing for a replacement controller? I have a 250 amp and 350 amp speed controllers. Well, the question is, uh, do you need a heavy duty forward and reverse switch? Well, for your application that you're for your application that you're describing, the answer is no. You wouldn't need a, a heavy duty forward and reverse switch for that. The normal one would be fine. The only difference between a heavy duty forward and reverse switch and a regular one, uh, a stock OEM forward and reverse switch, is the copper bus bars are thicker in the heavy duty forward and reverse switch. There's lots of people that have actually taken their regular, their regular forward and reverse switch and rebuilt it and they, they installed their rec, just heavier duty copper bus bars and that basically turns it into a heavy duty forward and reverse switch. If you're not developing any heat issues, if you're not developing any melting or burning or, or any type of electrical burn in that area, then a heavy duty forward inverse switch is not necessary, especially since you're going to be on, on, on just flat ground, uh, you know, back and forth for a few feet on flat ground. Now, if you started modifying the cart and you had bigger tires on it, uh, lifted, 
carrying around four people, going up hills and everything, then you would probably end up developing some heat in that area and a heavy duty forward burst switch may be necessary. Number seven. Can I start my electric car with only four of the six batteries in place? Nope, can't do it. It's not going to work. You, you probably couldn't. It probably wouldn't run if you had five of the six batteries in place. It's got to have all the batteries in place before it's going to run even close to being correctly. So I would say no. There's, there's not, there's no way. It's, it's just not going to work. It's just not enough voltage for it to, for it to go. And if it does, it's going to be so very slow that you're not even going to be able. It's not even going to be usable. Let's see. I don't have any questions on Facebook. number seven so we're going to number eight my 2001 Yamaha G16 will not move seems like the belt doesn't want to move prior to this there was a few minutes delay between pushing the gas pedal and movement now it won't move at all any suggestions would be greatly appreciated number eight doesn't want to move. Prior to this, there was a delay between pushing the gas pedal and movement. Now it won't move at all. Okay, if you, I just wanted to make sure you didn't say if it was gas or electric. If, uh, if there's a delay and then all of a sudden it starts moving and that happens over and over again, then I would be thinking this pedal stop switch. You know, the Yamaha has a big Yamaha has a big pedal stop switch right under the accelerator pedal. Uh, Yamaha's floor mats are very easy to take up. You can just you know, there's some push rivets or plastic push rivets that you that you pop out. Floor mat comes off, and then right there where the accelerator pedal is on the floor, there's an access panel. It doesn't even require any tools to to take it off. You know, the access panel just comes up, and you can look under there, and you can see when you press the accelerator pedal that it hits a switch. There's a switch right there. Well, I have had to replace those switches before. So that could be where your delay is coming from. You're hitting the switch, but it's not, it's an intermittent uh, active switch. So it's a not, it's not acting right all the time, just, just some of the time. So that, that could be it uh, for sure. Uh, that, in fact, that could be it, whether your car is electric or gas. All right, number nine. I have an easy go electric cart I use for street only. It currently has a top speed of 20. What can I do to increase to 25? Well, if you have a completely stock easy go and you're, you're hitting 20, I mean, that thing's running good. That thing is running. Might have some trouble going on with my with my feed here, sorry about that. I don't know what's happening there. Anyway, if you're only trying to go 25, you could probably accomplish that with just a high speed motor. Uh, that would just, uh, cause we, we sell at Golf Cart Garage, we sell some high speed motors that I know they claim the, up to 22 miles an hour with just the motor change. But that in conjunction with a bigger controller it could easily get you to your 25 numbers. And if that's not enough, then you could always switch gears and uh, your gears in your rear end and to a higher speed gear set. And that would get definitely get you there. But the first thing I would do would be to just put a high speed motor on it and see if that, see if that accomplishes everything you need. Let's see. That was number nine. All right. Number 10. I have a 2000 club car with a problem as it isn't switching off when charging. I found this wire off with the yellow connector. I don't know where it goes re related to charging is a question. 
Well, I remember speaking with this person about this this past week too. What it was is a club car, you know, they have the charging receptacle has three wires. The two main wires is positive and negative, and then the little wire that goes to the yellow fuse connector. It's a gray wire to a yellow fuse connector, and then it goes on. Well, that it goes on to the onboard computer. Well, the the that small wire had come out of the charging receptacle, so his his car his charger was never shutting off because it wasn't going through the onboard computer at that point. So anyway, once you figured it out, he's got to figure out a way to to reconnect that wire inside that charging receptacle. If not, he's going to end up having to get a new charging receptacle. But anyway, that was what was causing his problem. So that was that was solved. All right, remember I told you about a giveaway, but we're going to get to that in a second because I need to give them a, this week's tip first. I'm going to give the tip first and then we'll then I'll reveal the giveaway for this week. The tip is if you have to get underneath your golf cart, uh, this is especially true for electric get, uh, golf carts, but it is also true for, for gas golf carts. If you have to do work underneath, like the golf cart sitting on the concrete, always make sure that you have the key off and you disconnect a battery cable because I can tell you this from experience it is possible to have a wrench in a certain place and you turn something and you can activate the gas pedal the accelerator pedal and if you do that in the key zone the cart's going to roll and you're going to run over yourself now wouldn't that be crazy you ran over yourself with a golf cart so if you get under a golf cart to do any work on the on a golf cart underneath just make sure that you took the time to turn the key off and remove a battery cable just for safety issues. Okay, we're going to reveal the giveaway. Let's see here. It should appear like magic right now. Tim giveaways. Get 5% off any parts you order from Golf Cart Garage with coupon code TIM5. That's TIM5 and at, at checkout. This offer, this expires, this code is going to expire December 2nd. So if you want to get 5% off, of, make a big order. 5% can add up if it's a big order. You know, use code TIM5. Looks like we're still having some issues with the, the connection. It keeps disconnecting. But anyway, we'll get that worked out and I will see everybody on, uh, let's see, I'll see everybody on Tuesday, this next Tuesday. So until then, the garage is closed. Everybody have a good day.